Have you ever wondered, am I really a Christian? You feel like you've given your life to Jesus, but you're still struggling with certain things and you don't feel like you're where you should be. Maybe the enemy is attacking you with thoughts like, you're not really saved. Here are seven ways to know if you've been changed. Number one, grief over past sin. Now notice, I'm not talking about shame and guilt, the kind of feelings that come from the enemy because he doesn't want you to walk in forgiveness. I'm talking about a healthy grief over sin that leads us to repentance, where we confess to God like David did in Psalm 51, against you and you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. If we look at our lives and say, I mean, I made mistakes, we all do, but I'm basically a good person. We need to examine ourselves because the Bible says all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And the wages of sin is death, eternal separation from God. If we don't understand the seriousness of sin, we can't appreciate the glory of Jesus' death on the cross in payment for our sin and his resurrection, which allows us to walk in new life. But when we have seen our sin for what it is and we have repented, we can do nothing but praise our Lord for what he has done for us. We know we've been changed. Number two, you can see. We sing amazing grace. I once was lost, but now am found. Was blind, but now I see. That is Bible truth. Before we become believers, we are all blinded by the God of this world, Satan, so that we cannot see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ. It doesn't mean you've never heard of Jesus. You might have grown up in church or like me, grew up in Catholic schools, heard about Jesus my whole life. But once you believe and the veil is removed, you see things you never saw before. You're in an actual kingdom that you couldn't see before. You open the Bible and you can see and understand things that you've never seen or understood because these are spiritual words. And now you have the spirit. You see truth now. You see yourself now as God sees you. You see Jesus now in all his glory, Savior, King, Lord of your life. You see fellow believers in the kingdom, different colors and ethnicities, your brothers and sisters in Christ. Having eyes that see is glorious proof that you have been changed. Number three, you want to change. Before Christ, we are dead in sin, moving according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, Satan. We are not disturbed by the things we're doing or the way we're living. I've been married for 22 years, but before my husband and I were married, we were living together. We had moved from DC to Wisconsin to start our careers. We were engaged and it did not once cross our minds to look for two apartments. But after about a year and a half, the Lord began drawing our hearts, convicting us, and even though our wedding was only three months away, we wanted to make a change. So we got married in a private ceremony. And that was just the beginning of all the changes the Lord would bring about in our lives, which continues to this day. When we give our lives to Jesus, we are constantly being changed, transformed from glory to glory to glory into the image of Christ. We may look at our lives and see how far we need to go and get discouraged, but we all have a long way to go to be like Jesus. And the Lord takes us step by step by his grace with the power of his Holy Spirit. But if you want to change, that should encourage you because you're no longer dead in sin. You're alive in Christ. You're growing in him. You want to be like him. That's how you know you're not who you used to be. Number four, you've seen changes already. 
We tend to focus on the big struggles and the big changes we want to see in our lives. But I bet you've already seen changes in your life. How do I know? Because when we believe the Holy Spirit comes to dwell within, and there is no way you can have the Spirit of God living in you and there be no change. The love of God is poured out in our hearts through the Spirit. So we begin to treat people differently. Our thoughts begin to change. Our attitudes begin to change. We're no longer slaves to sin. Sin loses its power over us. You've probably already lost your appetite for certain things. But when we're still struggling with certain things, we can begin to doubt if we've really been changed. Remember, this is a journey. As we stay in the word, as we stay seeking the Lord, we will see his grace and power in every area of our lives. And that's the key, staying in the word so your mind is being constantly renewed and building up your relationship with the Lord by seeking him. But we have to keep ourselves encouraged by looking back at what he's already done in our lives and the changes he's already brought about. Number five, you're more aware of sin. This is important. When we're saved and growing as Christians, it can sometimes seem like we are being convicted of something every time we turn around. And we can get discouraged. It's like, what is going on? Am I moving backward? But the thing is, as you grow, you're becoming more sensitive to sin. You might say something, it's the same thing you've said for years to the same people. And all of a sudden it's like, I shouldn't have said that. Now you feel bad when you think the wrong thoughts. And that was never the case before. So be encouraged if you feel like, man, I'm always feeling convicted. It means you've been changed and you're growing. Number six, you're more God conscious. At work, in school, with your family, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, God is in the mix. Your desire is to please him, to glorify him. It's just part of you now because you have his spirit. So you find that he's on your mind and this is so different than the way you lived before. I remember being in a theater a few months after I was saved for a movie I couldn't wait to see. And after a while, there are these casual sex scenes going on and I'm feeling uncomfortable, which was unusual. And I'm like, hmm, because God was on my mind. And I'll never forget around the same time being in my car, popping in my Biggie Smalls cassette tape yeah, I said cassette tape, not even CD. I'm totally dating myself. And this was my jam. I'm in the car, grooving to the beat. And then it was like I couldn't hear the beat. Only the lyrics. And the words got louder and raunchier. And it was messing up my groove. <laughs> I threw those tapes out that night. You know you've been changed when you're thinking about God like never before. And when you're thinking about him like that, it's also making an impact on how you live. Number seven, you're making strange plans. I was saved at 27 and prior to that, I had a plan for my life. I was an attorney working as a litigator at a large law firm. I was about to make partner at that time and I was going to continue building my career and my 401k until retirement. Jesus invades my life and a few years later, I am leaving my career to be home with my children, talking about homeschooling. This was strange. And I know there were people around me who thought I was crazy, but there's this verse, one of my favorite verses in the Bible. Ephesians 2.10, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand so that we might walk in them. So before you even know the Lord, before the foundation of the world, God has these plans for you 
good works that will bring him glory and you commit your life to Jesus and begin walking with him and the Lord begins to reveal these plans to you. You start having these thoughts of a different path you might take, different things you might do. It doesn't have to be leaving a job. It might be a neighbor down the street that you have never known, might not even like. And all of a sudden, you're praying about ways that your path might connect with her so you can get to know her. It can be anything and several things. And often it's completely foreign to whatever you've considered before. And people may think you're crazy. You may think you're crazy, but what's happening is you are being changed and your entire life is being changed, molded and shaped in the hands of a loving God. The Lord is making himself known in you and through you and establishing the plans he has for you. So these are seven things. They're not exhaustive, of course, but I hope they've been a help to you and maybe even an encouragement to you. If you're not sure whether you're in Christ, think on these things. Seek the Lord about these things. The Bible tells us to examine ourselves to see if we are truly in the faith. The good news is that when you are in Christ, you are a new creation. The old things have passed away, the new has come, and that newness reveals itself in amazing ways.